about 20 years ago, I was sent a book dictated by a blind man, John Hull. One of the things which astonished me was his description of how visual imagery seemed to disappear after he lost his eyesight. Uh, for about a year, he could visualize uh, his wife and his children, and then it became more difficult to do so and finally impossible. It even became impossible for him to imagine what a three looked like unless he made it in the air. And um, he was at first frightened by this loss of inner vision, but he then welcomed it. He spoke of it as deep blindness, and he felt it was enabling him to pay full attention to the other senses, to, uh, in particular, to hearing and touch, which became very heightened and much more sensitive. Um, I, I wrote a review of the book, thinking that Hull's experience would be that of, of everyone who lost their vision. But I got a, a torrent of, um, of dissenting letters and sometimes outraged letters from blind people saying that their experience had been quite different from his. And most of the letters from blind people described a state very different from that of Hull's, uh, one in which visual imagery and memory was preserved and often heightened. Uh, one correspondent says, although I've been blind for 30 years, I see my hands as I'm typing this letter. Um, uh, the most impressive of the letters was from an Australian, Zoltan Torrey. He was a very good visualizer, and he determined, if he could not see the world, to visualize it. Um, not to hallucinate it, but to construct it from other data and from memory and from what people said as accurately as possible and also in a flexible way. He, um, he describes how at one point his neighbors were horrified at seeing him on the roof of his house working at night. Um, of course, it makes no difference to a blind man whether it's day or night, but um, he was prepared to stake everything on his powers of visualization. And so this was a strange paradox uh, that the inner eye should be heightened as the outer eye was lost.